India is a complex country with many foreign tourists facing culture shock. In order to prepare, I shared a video with the biggest mistakes me, my friends and family made as foreign tourists while traveling in India. This video got so much good responses, I thought a follow-up video with more mistakes to avoid while traveling in India might be helpful too. I've been traveling India myself since 2015 and currently I am even based in India. I hope this video helps you prepare even more if you plan on traveling India. In case you haven't watched the first video, it's link down in the description below and if you'd like to see more of my videos in the future make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications let's do this more mistakes that foreigners make in india number one just sticking to north india and completely neglecting south india as a former French colony, Pondicherry is a very special place in India. There's a unique mix between Indian and French culture, which makes Pondicherry a true multicultural experience. Kerala has everything you need for an amazing getaway. It is the land of the backwaters, Ayurveda, the Chinese fishing nets, beautiful beaches and even waterfalls. We have made it to the Bellavari temple. It is absolutely stunning, let's take a look inside. While driving here, I have to say I am so enjoying the rural, my most hated English world word, <laughs> rural views. I feel like I'm in a movie. All of the South Indian movies that I've seen, I'm just feeling all of these vibes. It's absolutely gorgeous. I am genuinely not saying this to suck up to South Indians because they're always like super proud of their part of the country. But I lucked out so much when I was coming to India for the first time. I'm sorry, the power went off. Those kind of things happen in India. So we'll have to do it without the fairy lights for now. The first time that I came to India, I was scheduled to fly to Delhi because that's what you do when you go to India, right? You fly either into Mumbai or you fly into Delhi. That was my mindset. And that's also what I read about the previous travels of other foreigners. But I was in Malaysia. So suddenly, I don't know why, last minute before I booked my ticket to Delhi, I thought, let me just check tickets to other places in India. And Skyscanner has this feature where you can like select a country and get all of the airports. And a ticket to Delhi was 400 or 500 euros at the time. And suddenly I saw this little place pop up in India, in South India, Kochi. And that ticket was only 100 euros. So I was like, you know what? We're gonna go to Kochi and then I'm probably gonna take a domestic flight in India to go to North India if I want to, because I was traveling very freely, because that's probably gonna be cheaper than booking a 400, 500 euro flight to Delhi. Like most foreigners, when I came to India for the first time, I expected madness, chaos, hour long waiting queues at the airport, and none of that turned out to be true. I literally didn't wait for like two minutes at Kochi Immigration. I got my luggage within 10 minutes. I got my SIM card finished within 10 minutes. and. I just took a local bus. I was beyond surprised. South India has so much undiscovered treasures for foreign tourists. It's a lot more peaceful than the north. You have so much beautiful greenery. Varkala Beach is one of my favorite beaches in India. I like it. Yeah? I feel very zen-like. I know, right? It's such a chill vibe here. Oh my goodness. I wanna give you this recommendation because this is the recommendation that I also give to all my friends who are coming to India for the past year. It is so much easier to get you know, eased into Indian culture, the honking, the food, you know, the different culture. Don't, you know, put yourself in a situation where you're too overwhelmed with the culture shock. In the South, all these new experiences will definitely be there, but they will be a lot more toned down than in the north. You can take a domestic flight later if you really want to go to North India, which obviously you should. Rajasthan is also one of my favorite states in India. The second mistake I see literally every single foreigner make who I'm with and who I observe coming to India for the first time is being too polite. And obviously I made this mistake as well. It means that you're using too much words to ask for what you want. One example I'll give you, a friend of mine from the US, which is a very polite country, was in India for the first time recently and she wanted tea without milk. What she was saying is, hi, could you please get me tea without milk? I would really appreciate that. Could you add sugar to the side? And this guy was looking at her like, I don't understand what you want. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> in India, you also have to read the body language a lot. So he said to her, okay, so chai. And she was like, yeah, yes, but please put the milk on the side. I don't want tea in my milk, blah, blah, blah. And she started talking again with way too many words. I just looked at her. I looked at him and I was like, no, 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 no. This is all going to go wrong. So I looked at the guy and I was like, chai, no milk. And it's not rude to do things this way in India. Obviously, if you have a rude attitude, it will be rude. But if you're just a nice person saying, no, no, just chai, no milk, it will be a lot clearer to people what you want. One, because a lot of Indians do struggle with English, even though it is a national language, they don't get to speak it a lot. Obviously, in the big cities they do, but some people are from like more rural areas so it will be a lot easier for them to understand you if you just speak with less words and two there is also a language reason for this now that i'm learning hindi more i also understand that in india you would just say sirf chai dudne like only tea no milk just recently i asked one of my friends how to say like oh i can't understand you or i can't hear you and in hindi it is oh man i forgot nazur zazur bolo or something like that it's only three words when in english we would say hey i cannot understand you could you please speak up a little bit more <laughs> not saying that hindi is the national language in india for all my people who are gonna get offended but it is very common to speak with less words in india and the way you express respect is also different in india if you want to address someone with respect you would add g for instance to their name or how you address them so if somebody wants to be polite to me they would say ivana g something like that and you don't say like please and could you and blah 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 blah. people will really understand you better if you use less words number three please do keep in mind that you're a guest <laughs> and i say this because i see a lot of people coming to india knowing that it's a very cheap country Obviously, people speak the language differently than you're used to. So for you, it might come off rude when somebody's speaking with less words, but in their language or in their culture, it is not rude. And then they start acting like entitled foreigners. <laughs> what I mean by that is that they think everything in India should revolve about them just because they have money to spend here as a tourist. If there is one country in the world where people genuinely will care more if you treat them with respect then about your money it will be india i know a lot of indians if you're rude or disrespectful to them it doesn't matter how much money you're willing to offer them they will just walk away and say go f yourself and i really like that about the country but it makes life a lot harder for people who think that just because they have money indians will run all around them when they don't your life and your travels in india are going to be so much easier if you treat people with respect if you are kind to them even when you think somebody's being rude to you sometimes they aren't it's just their way of communicating trying to be rude and shove money in their hands or stuff like that that will really turn people off so don't be that entitled foreigner indians oh my god they will treat you as a god they have this saying atiti devo baba guest is god indian people feel very normal about their hospitality but what i can tell you is that indian hospitality is absolutely unrivaled in the world when indian people say atiti devo baba so guest is god they literally treat you as a freaking god you have no idea how much food me and my dad got we got completely taken care of here on the birth honestly this is normal hospitality in the world this is indian hospitality there's like not even a limit over here if you are a good guest indians will literally treat you as a god the fourth thing and it's something that i really need to address is despite all the tips that i just gave you especially as a girl especially as a woman you need to learn mom mode <laughs> especially sometimes indian men have issues with listening to what you want so even if you repeat something to them like five times they will talk over you they will interrupt you they might be thinking that you don't understand what is good or what is the right thing to do so they will try to make you do the things that how they want you to do things an example that i can give you i was working with a public photographer i just ran into him in the streets me being a photographer myself i know exactly how i want my pictures i know how i want them framed i know what lighting to use i know what what i want in the background and this guy kept telling me how to pose how 
to like move my head and I was like no that is not my angle at all so I kept telling him no no I want it like this no no I want it like this and at one point I got so annoyed because also my time is limited there are a lot of crowds in India so you have to do things quite fast and I just told him listen if you don't want to do this I'm just gonna go and I said that in a mom mode that is something that will trigger so many people you're not being rude you're just being very straight and clear about what you want and if oh the power came back on yay <laughs> that really helps for people to just reset their brain to start listening to you maybe they're bringing you things that you don't want taking you to shops where you don't want to go sometimes it's really necessary to put on your mom cap and snap somebody out of their you know directional mode for them to do what you want them to do. <laughs> I think that's also a very good way to scare off scammers because once they see that you are very confident, that you clearly know what you want, that they cannot mess with you, they will search for an easier target because that's what scammers want, the easiest targets. Number five, and this one is extremely important for your peace of mind when you're visiting such an extreme country like India. Many times I had to put my own feet to the ground and get a perspective because otherwise it is very, very easy in India to get lost in a good Samaritan role. That's how I like to call it. Is that feeling you get when you, for instance, see bare children in, walking in the streets or people sleeping in the streets, maybe people who look hungry, elderly people who are begging, something that you really should know about this country? Oh, the power went off again. <laughs> The power goes off quite a lot, especially during the summer, during the rainy summer. India is an extremely special country in the world, as far as I have seen, when it comes down to poverty and happiness and materialistic things. If you are open for it, the people who have the least will teach you the best lessons. And I'll give you an example of this. One of my friends, he has sleeping problems. One night we were walking down Marine Drive in Mumbai and he saw this uh, guy who was sleeping on the floor. He looked at him and he was like, oh my gosh, I feel so bad. I don't want this for my country because he was Indian. I really need to resolve this problem. I want to give this man a roof over his head. And I just looked at him and I asked him like, hey, do you think that man is having a good sleep? And he was like, yeah, it looks like he's really getting a good nap. And I looked at him and I said, so you have an extremely comfortable bed. You have air conditioning. How do you sleep? And he looked at me like, I was like, who are you to think that you can improve this man's life with just materialistic things? And he was like, oh my gosh. India has a billion of these kind of lessons for you. If you are willing to open your mind and look at these people from a different perspective, preferably also interact with them and learn about their life. India truly is a teacher if you are willing to be a student and not just bring your Western mentality here that materialistic things or even an education will make you a happier human being. Some of the most happiest people that I have seen were gypsies in the Rajasani desert. Their kids didn't even go to school. There was nothing around them for miles. It truly taught me that happiness is within you. You don't need materialistic things. You don't even need three meals a day. You don't need an education to be happy. Okay, I'm having such a cliche Western tourist mental breakdown and not because I feel sad for these children they don't go to school they grow up here and they will probably um, be doing what their parents are doing and actually why I'm having such a mental breakdown is because every time I come to India I see how little you need to be happy some western children are they have everything and they have all the education and they're so unhappy so this might even be a better life than having everything. I'm sorry. Obviously, if you want to do something good for the world, I would say 
start with your own country because every country in the world has their own problems if you are from that culture you will understand those problems the best obviously india also has its own problems. There are so many problems here, but I genuinely believe that if you don't know the culture, you will not be able to give the best solutions for that country fitting in that cultural context. So if you come to India and you look around and you only see the problems that you feel that you need to fix, you're not gonna have a good time. I have literally said this to every friend and even my brother and my father who came here that you need to let India sort its own problems. What you need to do is enjoy the country and contribute to the local economy in a positive way by enjoying your trip to the max and eating all of the Indian food. <laughs> I hope this video was helpful and gives every foreigner an amazing trip in India. If you feel this is a valuable video, please make sure to share it with other people who might be coming to India or planning a trip to India. I want everybody who comes here to have a really great time. Also make sure to please put a thumbs up and if you are not yet subscribed to my channel, make sure to subscribe right now and also click the bell icon to get notifications for new videos in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.